I love the fall. Hey guys, welcome back. Let's do a September wrap up. I'll tell you what I read that was good and what was bad, and then we'll go through my October TBR and new releases to be aware of for October. First things first, fourth wing. Do I really need to go into this one? The hype on this book is everywhere. It's about Violet, who is attending a war college to be a dragon writer. There are all of your typical fantasy romance aspects um, with dragons and magic. And there's also romance aspects with this enemies to lovers plot line. Overall, it was a very good book. No surprise there. But I didn't love that the book was based on a 20 year old in college, but that's just a personal preference. I feel like I'm growing out of that age group a little bit for books. For the purpose of the plot, it made sense. And of course, I enjoyed the romance aspect of the novel. That's not surprising. I do have a full video regarding Fourth Wing out there if you wanna check it out. I talk about the things I liked, something that made me really mad, and then predictions for the rest of the series. Next is Lone Woman. This was a book of the month pick some month, I don't remember when, sometime this past year. But since I saw it, I've been very intrigued by it. So I've had it on a hold from my library for a very long time. And we finally got to the chance to read it. So this one is about a main character, Adelaide, who is a lone woman, and she's making it on her own, homesteading to this rural Montana property. She has a secret that she's been carrying with her for her entire life. And she's bringing this secret along with her to Montana in a steamer trunk. Now this book is classified as horror, but I felt like it was more of a fantasy historical fiction about homesteading in the 1900s versus a horror novel. Obviously there were some horror aspects to it. I didn't feel like that was the main crux of the novel. Overall though, I really liked the book. I thought it was very well written. The end did get a little weird. <laughs> I was like with it up until the end, I was like, okay, things are happening. Mostly I really liked the main character. She was very strong and independent. And there were also other very strong independent women in the book as well. So I love that. I love me a strong, woman character. Every month, if you've seen these, you know that I pick a random book from my friends here, um, from my shelf of books that need to be read. And um, this month's pick was The Buried Giant. Huh. Didn't love it. So I actually stopped reading this about halfway through. I made it to one page 171. I don't know why I kept reading it that far. Oh, I was going to finish it, but I could not keep going because it was so boring. Now, the premise I was very interested in, it's a fantasy novel based in Arthurian times about a husband and wife who are setting out to visit their son in this village that is days and days walk away from their own village. Now in the book, there's this mist that's taken over the land and it causes people to have limited memories. So along the way, they start traveling with this warrior and this young boy and they both have their own secrets. I have complaints. Firstly, the dialogue. Every interaction between the interactions of the husband and wife are so formal and really awkward to read. And every time after the husband says anything to his wife, he addresses her as princess, like as a pet name, like she's not actually a princess, but it was consistent and annoying and it wouldn't stop. It was just like, are you okay, princess? Are you worried, princess? It'll be okay, princess. I'm looking forward to seeing our son soon too, princess. Stop. It wasn't quirky in a cute way. And I feel like I might have been able to look past the dialogue if the actual story had things going on. But at the halfway mark, we were still traveling. We've met these characters and we've learned some things about the mist, but it just felt like nothing was happening. So I felt very comfortable not finishing this book, especially went through Goodreads and I was reading some reviews being like, do I keep reading this or what? And some people mentioned that the ending was not worth 
the struggling of reading the book. So I'm done. But his other novel, Never Let Me Go, I'm still, that's still on my TBR, it's still on my shelf. One day I will read that. I'm not giving up on the author, I just didn't like this book. Next, to lighten the mood a little bit, we had a little rom-com, Unfortunately Yours, by the lovely, lovely Tessa Bailey. This is an author that I love, not because her books are good, but for some reason I just really enjoy them for what they are. They're these simple little smutty romances and I like them. So this one was about a marriage of convenience about Natalie and August who are both looking to benefit financially from a marriage. They had this initial attraction um, I think previous to this one from what I gathered, but I didn't read the book in the series prior to this one. Um, you know it's one of those books where it's like oh this is a standalone but also like there's characters from like previous books and like they build off of each other. But from what I gathered, they almost hooked up from the previous novel, I think, but now things have gone sour and they ended up forming a bit of a hatred for each other. So this led to some really wonderful banter between these two characters in the book. They're constantly jabbing at one another and roasting each other, but naturally they're both still very attracted to one another. And this leads to mutual pining, of course, and eventual love. I did feel like the timing on the book was a little off. Everything moved so quickly. I mean, the whole book took place over the course of like two weeks, so it felt unnatural to me, but it's fiction, right? So I still had fun reading the book. Um, I have learned with Tessa Bailey to just sit back and enjoy the book and don't overthink it. The Book of the Month poll winner for September was The Stranger Upstairs. So thank you, of course, to everybody who voted. I thought that this one sounded wild, so I was very thrilled that this was a winner. If you don't wanna miss voting in the next poll, be sure to subscribe to the channel. This is a thriller about a woman who buys a murder house with plans of a renovation to make a large profit off of the sale of the house. The house is not happy about this. So I had a lot of fun reading this book. It was super quick and short. I mean, it's super, it's a little guy. It's very, very short. I breezed right through it. I liked that the author got in, told the story they wanted to tell, and then they got out. There was no unnecessary dragging on or anything in the book. It was just clipping right along. I do, of course, have a full spoiler talk on this book if you want all of the details, but basically the main character is a really unlikable, terrible character. But as a reader, you know she's terrible and she knows she's terrible and she doesn't give a fuck, which was very interesting to read. Also, I didn't even think about the twist of the book. It was completely off my radar, but once it was revealed, I was like, oh, okay, I like that. So this was a fun little read. I. I don't know, I would recommend it. Another thriller I read was All the Dangerous Things. This one came out back in January of this year and I've been wanting to read it and I just now got around to it. Basically, it's about a woman whose son was kidnapped from his room in the middle of the night and she is now obsessed with solving the crime. I found this book to be very classic, basic thriller. The mother doesn't know what happened to the child and she wants to. And now us as the reader, we're gonna come along for that journey. The writing was really good, as was the pacing. I found the book to be pretty predictable, but the timing of the reveals were really well done. This book definitely put this author on my radar and I do need to go back and read her debut, A Flicker in the Dark. I've heard that that one is also really, really good. So I'll get to it. <laughs> okay, oh my gosh, you guys. So Ink Blood, Sister Scribe, this book, I cannot believe that I didn't read this immediately when it came out. Everyone was mentioning it was so good and I knew I needed to get to it, but now I just wish I would have gotten to it sooner. It was so good. So this book is about half-sisters Esther and Joanna. They grew up surrounded by magical books and as an adult, 
Esther has spent her entire childhood moving around and Joanna has stayed in their childhood home to protect their family's library. When their father dies, they have to reunite, let's say for protection, but really there is just so much more going on in this novel than what was talked about in the premise of the book. I had no idea where the story was going the entire time when I was reading it. All I knew was that I was in love with this book. The book has such a cozy feel to it and it has magic books with its own like little mini magic system. Oh, we also have these two characters, Nicholas, and he's this posh English man, and he has his bodyguard, Collins. Joanna and Esther and Nicholas and Collins, their dynamic just works so well. They're all such different characters, but they mesh together so well. It's kind of like a found family type thing. I'm just so happy. I just love them so much. I really, really want this book to have a sequel just so that I can spend more time with these characters. So I literally can't say anything else about the book because there were too many like secrets and twists and anything else I say, I feel like I'm just gonna spoil the book. So all I'm going to say is read it. I thought it was so good. I recommend it. Okay, so now we're moving into October TBR. Of course, the book of the month poll winner for October was The Unmaking of June Faro. I'm very excited for it. It's by the author of Spells for Forgetting, Adrienne Young. And when I read this one last year, I was like, I love you. So I'm very, very excited for um, The Unmaking of June Faro. Super, super excited. I have a spoiler talk on that coming out at the end of the month. So we have to do our little um, TBR friend. I have an entire bookshelf full of physical books that I'm like, I'll get to you. Okay. Okay, let's see. Fine. Okay, it's Return to Us. Let me grab it. Okay, so I'm not mad that this is a pick. <laughs> this is one that I've already tried to read in the past. Um, so as you can see, it's a very pretty special edition, but I only, when I was reading it previously, I only made it to page 63 and I was like, eh, I don't know how I feel about this. So I will try it again. I don't really remember what happened in those 63 pages I read. I think it was like last year or the year before. Okay, so I'll read that, I swear. So I'm really, really trying to read through all of the physical books that I've purchased in 2023. They're 20 2023 releases. Assistant to the Villain, I bought this because I love the sprayed edge. I thought it sounded cute. Um, reviews are kind of mixed, so hoping it's good. I really, really hope it's good, but we'll see. Divine Rivals by Rebecca Ross. I'm finally going to read this. This book is by the author of one of my favorite books from last year, A River Enchanted. So this is the Illumicrate edition and it's very nice and very beautiful. So I don't wanna to touch it. So it's actually on Kindle Unlimited. So I'm going to actually read it on Kindle Unlimited so I don't mess up my pretty special edition because <laughs> I'm not careful with my things. Also, I'm going to read um, the ARC I have for What the River Knows. And that book is by the author of this one, Together We Burn by Isabel Ibanez. I really liked this one. And so when I saw there was an ARC for What the River Knows, I was like, ah, request. So I'll for sure read that one because I think it's coming out at the end of October. So I need to read it and get my review out there. Okay, so those are the books I'm committed to reading. Of course, I will read a lot more, um, whatever catches my fancy. Um, I'm looking to read some nice like fantasy, like cozy type seeming books since it's October. And it just is, that's just the vibe, you know? So those are all of the books that I have planned for my TBR for October. And then of course, here are October releases to be aware of. What the River Knows by Isabel Ibanez, The Unmaking of June Faro by Adrian Young, Midnight is the Darkest Hour by Ashley Winstead. Starling House by Alex E. Haro. The Hurricane Wars by Thea Gonzin. Throne of the Fallen by Carrie Manasalco. Curious Tides by Pascal Lasselle. Okay guys, so that is it for me today. As always, thank you so much for watching. I hope you find some awesome things to read in October. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll see you next time. Bye.